Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how I made this remote controlled tricycle riding puppet. And let me say right off the bat that this isn't a video about making puppets. I bought the puppet and modified them a little to get the fit right. What I will show you though is a little about how I motorized this tricycle. But for the full details, check out the Instructables guide listed in the description. So why the hell did I do this? Well, this is one of those projects that rattled around in my brain ever since Maker Faire New York in 2018. Possibility Studios brought this Kermit the Frog puppet that rode around on a radio flyer tricycle, and everywhere it went, you could just hear people melt. It was like a remote-controlled smile delivery system. And needless to say, after the past few years, I really wanted a feel-good project that would get me out of the house, so riffing on this Kermit idea seemed like a sure bet. I also took a lot of inspiration from this bicycle riding skeleton project by RC Jedi on Instructables. Mash them together and I felt like I could piece together something similar, but still have room to make it my own. The first problem to tackle, and really this is the main technical challenge, is how to motorize a kid's tricycle. And like the Kermit design, I really wanted to conceal the electronics as much as I could to create the illusion that the puppet is doing all the work. For their design, most of the electronics seem to be in that box on the back. Plus, I'm assuming a servo in the front basket for steering. For my design, I put absolutely everything in the back under the axle. There are some trade-offs. You can see some of the components if you look hard enough. Still, I wanted to see if it would be possible to fit everything under here without sticking on some extra enclosure to hide it. On my Instructable, you can find links to the exact motors I use, the servos, battery pack, motor driver, belts and gears, so go check that out if you want all the details. Now, I use belts here instead of chain for a few reasons. One was safety. I figured there may be curious kids poking their fingers in here and a chain to seem more prone to pinching. Another reason was spacing because everything is so compact and the distance from the wheel to the motor is so small, I figured a belt would be more precise, look better, and probably be quieter. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this worked, and it's discreet, which for a project like this I think is more important than it being efficient. That said, the belt is prone to slipping, especially in reverse, and it has a hard time on anything but flat road and sidewalks, so I'd probably rethink this if I had to do it again, or I motorized the second wheel too. For steering, I used a high torque 24 volt servo. This thing is awesome, but it's big and it's overkill. I could have put it in the basket like the Kermit design, but instead I put it here under the axle where it just barely clears the ground. By putting it back here, I also have to run a rod out to the front wheel, which distracts from the illusion a little, but it turns out that once you get a puppet on top, everything else just kind of fades into the background. Finding the right puppet was tricky though because I really wanted something that felt like it was from the Muppet universe to try to incorporate a little of that magic that I felt from the Kermit design. But it turns out that actual Muppet replicas are not only super expensive, they're also a bit smaller than I'd need for this scale. On top of that, not to spoil it, but most puppets don't have legs. So my first step with the puppet was to create a functional stand-in using pipe insulation and zip ties. After working out the size I needed, the closest affordable thing I could find was this puppet called Jasper, made by a company called Puppets. The only drawback to this puppet was that the legs weren't long enough, so I cut the poor guy's legs off and then extended them with some pipe insulation and zip tied them around the threaded rod I ran up through the seat to prop them up. It also gave me an opportunity to dress him up in a glow-in-the-dark skeleton outfit, which I thought would be more appropriate for Halloween. And in the end, it all works, which is kind of crazy because it's one of those projects where if I had to do it again, I would probably do nearly everything different. But that's how you learn, right? And even though I thought the puppet was kind of goofy and cute, most people seem terrified of this thing. I think some of that is because the size is big enough to put him in this uncanny valley where you're not quite sure if it's an actual kid in a costume. So far, people seem more concerned than delighted. Especially my dog, who is really not a fan. 
Again, check out the Instructables guide for more details. And if you have some constructive tips on how to make this better or simplify the design, be sure to let me know.